Hey, what's up everyone? This is Music Tech Help Guy, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to load up multiple instruments inside of one instance of contact, and then separate those instruments by channel, essentially making them a multi-output instrument to make each instrument easier to mix while still containing all of those instruments in one instance of contact. Last week I did a video on using multi-output mode for contact drum kits, and I got a lot of great questions on that video. One question I got was from Gladys here. How does the routing work when using different instruments versus a drum kit without creating multiple instances of contact? I can't seem to get the routing to work because all the sounds seem to route to one channel or Omni. I've attempted to separate the instruments to different tracks and logic based on the output settings in contact, but it doesn't seem to register the changes, so I'm either stuck with no sounds coming through their individual channel or default back to Omni. The part about Omni, I think you're confusing uh, multi-output with uh, the MIDI routing, MIDI input and output routing. That's kind of a different thing. So I have Contact 8 already loaded up, and if you're using Contact 8, you can start loading up your instruments. But if you're using Contact 7, there's one additional step you want to do. Um, what I like to do is click the library button here and then go to view, change this over to classic view because I just like the classic view better, then click view and then select outputs and your outputs will show up here. Now in contact eight, this automatically loads up multiple outputs for you to route in multi-output mode, but in contact seven, you have to click this menu, go to factory and then choose a multi-output routing. So you could click like stereo 16 X or something like that. And then once you've done that, close that out. Next, you're gonna to wanna to go over to your instance of contact and load it up in a multi-output mode. So I'm gonna use 16X stereo. It will reload contact for me. There we go. And now what I can do is load up the instruments that I wanna work with. I'm going to use the diamond keys as my first instrument. So I'll load that up. And let's choose a preset in here. Let's try out the flying diamonds preset. what I can do is I can minimize that instrument. To load in your next instrument, make sure that this first instrument isn't selected, otherwise it's just gonna swap it out. So if you see this little orange bar here, that means that that instrument is selected. So click on the background to deselect it, and then choose your next instrument that you wanna layer up. So I'm going to use Analog Dreams. Let's load up Analog Dreams 2.0. I can maximize the view and choose a preset. Let's try a pad here. I like the sound, but it's kind of in a lower register. So let's go to our sound parameters here. Let's transpose this up an octave on uh, both oscillators, actually. Let's go up 12 semitones. Okay, I'm gonna add in one more instrument. I'm gonna use the piano colors instrument for this. It's great for adding motion with a lot of like alternate playing styles and you know percussive ways of playing the piano. So let's go ahead and open that up and I'll go ahead and just use the stock aleatoric sequence. So right now you can see all three of these instruments are playing and they're all coming through this one channel. However, because we loaded this up in multi-output mode, I can click the plus button here a couple of times. We'll make the first channel our keys, the second channel will be the synth pad, and then the third channel will be piano colors. So I can name them accordingly, but when I press play, you're gonna see that everything's still coming through that first channel. So in contact, you're going to go to one of your instruments and click the I button here and then go to the output routing and change that to the output you want. So output one is the first channel, output two is the second channel, and output three is the third channel. So I'll select output three, and so that's gonna send piano colors over to this track, and then I can go to analog dreams, click the I button, and I can route that to two. So the keys are going to one, the pad is going to two, and piano colors is going to three. And if you need to get back to your presets here, just click this button, and then you can access that menu again. So now we have all three instruments playing on different tracks. Thank you. 
So you have level and pan control, and you can add effects to each of these tracks. You can even add different sends to each channel. So maybe if I wanted to add a little reverb to just these two channels, I could throw a send on here. I could pull the aux channel over, load up some reverb. Let's use black hole for this. So I've got a reverb channel, but maybe I want to add an EQ to Piano Colors to scoop out some of the bottom end. And the auxiliary channels coming from Contact, you can right click or control click on these and select Create Track or press Control T. And all of those tracks will show out here in the tracks area. So this is channel one containing Contact, channel two that's an aux track for the pad, channel three that's an aux track for piano colors, and another auxiliary channel for reverb. And if we really want to, you can select all of these and throw these all into a summing stack. And then you can just kind of make this the main track for that sort of multi-channel instrument or multi-output instrument. And you can actually put the MIDI region on the track stack itself, or you can put it on the first channel of the contact instrument. It won't matter. You'll get the same result. Now, I know if I don't mention this, I know someone will say you can just create three instances of contact and throw all three of them or as many as you want inside of a summing stack. And yes, you can totally do that. But this specific question was about using just one instance of contact. So that's how you can do that. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. Remember, starting this year, the Music Tech Help Guy YouTube channel is one 100% sponsor free. So you'll never see a sponsored segment on any of my videos ever again. However, keep in mind running this YouTube channel and keeping it going takes a lot of time and effort. So the best way you can directly support the cause is to check out my website, logicproguide.com and purchase one of my courses. I currently have a Logic Pro 11 essentials course that takes you through all of the fundamentals. And if you're interested in getting into the session players and chord track, I have a 12 part mini course on on that as well. Thank you everyone so much for the continued support. If you've already purchased a course or maybe you're waiting on a new course, I am working on a new mixing course that will go up at my website. Again, that's logicproguide.com uh, sometime very soon. That should be out within the next month or so. Thank you so much for the support and thanks for watching.